Today I'm going to read to you from one of my favourite stories by one of my favourite authors, The Twits, written by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake and read by Mrs Fernandez. Part 1. Hairy Faces What a lot of hairy-faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. The very hairy ones wash their faces. It must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week, like us, on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hair dryer? Do they rub hair tonic in it to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to the barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? I don't know, but next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you step out onto the street, Maybe you will look more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr Twit Mr Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose, was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr Twit felt that his hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither of these things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was born a twit. And now, at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on, Mr. on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And just how often did Mr Twit wash his bristly nail brushy face of his? The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty Beards As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in amongst the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy men cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy men. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there was always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve whilst he was eating. If you looked closely, not that you would ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all the other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. If you looked closer still, now hold your noses ladies and gentlemen, if you peered 
deep into the moustachey bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that has escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tinned sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I am trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul, smelly, old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man. Mrs Twit Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that at any rate would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman uglier than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She'd had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on their face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts can never be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and sticky out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful but the real reason she carried the stick was so that she could hit things with it, like dogs and cats and small children. Then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. The glass eye. You can play a lot of tricks with a glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs Twit knew all the tricks. One morning she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr Twit sat there drinking his beer slowly. The throth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. He wiped, them. He wiped the white froth onto his sleeve and wiped his sleeve onto his trousers. You're plotting something. Mrs Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see, that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs Twit was right. Mr Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think up a really nasty trick he could play on his wife that day. You'd better be careful. Mrs Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr Twit said. He went on drinking his beer and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. Suddenly, as Mr Twit tipped the last of the, his beer down his throat, he caught sight of Mrs Twit's awful glass eye staring up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you! cackled Mrs Twit. <laughs>
I've got eyes everywhere, so you'd better be careful. The Frog To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs Twit's bed. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr Twit slipped the frog between her sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs Twit came back and climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was always itching. Dirty old hags like her always have itchy tummies. Then, all at once, she felt something cold and slimy crawling over her feet. Ah! She screamed. What's the matter with you? Mr Twit said. Help! Screamed Mrs Twit, bouncing about. There's something in my bed! I'll bet it's just a giant skilly wiggler. I saw one on the floor just now, Mr Twit said. Screamed Mrs Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. Ah! Help! Screamed Mrs Twit. Save me! It's all over my feet! It'll bite off your toes, said Mr Twit. Mrs Twit fainted. Mr Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured the water over Mrs Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. This one was having a good time. When Mrs Twit came to, the frog had just jumped on her, onto her face. This is not a nice thing to have happen to, happen to anyone in bed at night. She screamed again. By golly! It's a giant skilly wiggler, Mr Twit said. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs Twit leapt out of bed and flew down the stairs and spent the night on the sofa. Her frog went to sleep on her pillow. The Wormy Spaghetti The next day to pay Mr Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big long ones and put them in the tin and carried the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey! My spaghetti's moving! cried Mr Twit, poking around in it with his fork. It's a new kind, Mrs Twit said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up whilst it's nice and hot. Mr Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon, there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs Twit said. She was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her the greatest pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it... Rather bitter, said Mr T Twit. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs Twit waited until Mr Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was squishy? Mr Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with the corner of the tablecloth. Why, he said, and why it had a nasty bitter taste. Why, he said, because it was worms. 
cried Mrs Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter.